old our mother truckers. So I've got a theory about why this was Honda's biggest mistake. So this is the ST1100. I've done videos on that one before. This is the ST1300. This is actually an ex police bike. Uh, and I'll give you some details of that as we're riding around on it now. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of a theory as to where I think Honda went wrong with this bike. So let's put this one away and let's take this one out. Brom, brom, brom. Alrighty then. So let's start at the beginning, shall we? This is a 2006 Honda Pan European. Um, it used to belong to the police force. Let me tell you the quick story about that. Uh, a guy that I bought it from was uh, a serving police officer. And when the Hondas developed this horrible weave that was consequently throwing officers off, um, they withdrew these bikes from service and he then, you know, they went to the BMW, he then bought it from the police, he signed, signed like a little waiver form to say, look, I'm not going to sue you if I come off, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that, that was it, it became, it became his bike. So then what he did was he bought it, used it a few times, put it away in a garage, every now and then he'd take it out if you look at the MOT history of this bike there's like no miles in between each MOT it's like very very minimal you know 200 mile here and there um, and then he decided he was going to sell it so this has only got 31,000 miles on it what? and for a Honda Pan that's pretty much unheard of let's go around the cyclists shall we? So, the reason that I bought this bike is the reason that I bought the 1100 really. I bought the, well, I bought the 1100 as a winter hack and the 13 I just felt like I needed, I just needed the 1300. I just felt like I wanted one, I was ready to do it. And the reasons behind that were, were quite simple and this is it, you know, I wanted to go camping on my own I wanted to kind of go and do a bit of distance and with when I had the ZZR 1400 which is a bike that I constantly refer to all the time in, in videos I still love that bike it's still a phenomenal piece of machinery but it just didn't make sense for me uh, like sports bikes don't make sense for me now they really don't you know I'm seeing more and more now it, it's a pub spunkathon you know, when people would talk to me about the ZZR 1400, there's two things that they would always ask me. How fast will it go? And what's the brake horsepower? That's all he wanted to know. Not, have you been anywhere on it? Have you been touring? Have you done this? Have you done that? Just nothing. They just wanted to know how fast it went and what the fucking brake horsepower was. This, the SC 1300, nobody asks them questions because you know, by default, they're, they're kind of boring bikes, to be honest. They're boring. I paid four and a half grand for this bike on the 2006, 31,000 miles. You can imagine with it being a police bike, the amount of history that it's got. I mean, it's like this thick, the book of everything that's been done to it. No compromise at all. If it needed it, it got it. If it didn't need it, it got it. And that's where it wanted to be. I threw new tyres on it straight away, which is, I bought Michelin Pilot Road 6 on, um, which I've used before. I'm happy with them tyres. Everyone was like, oh, you need to put the Bridgestone BT something, something. I like the Michelins. They suit the way that I ride. Uh, and I can't speak, you know, highly enough about them. I think they're phenomenal tyres. So, let's talk about my theory as where did Honda go wrong with this bike? What did they do that was so, so much of a catastrophic mistake? So here's my theory. And in the comment section below, let me know if you agree with it or you've got an alternative, okay? So the ST1100 came out, kind of took the world by storm. 
it was well received, everybody loved it. Then they updated it to the ST1300, and some people with the 1100 then maybe saw that as an upgrade. You know, it had a, a slightly more powerful engine, the shape was a little bit different, there was a few things on it that uh, were possibly, you know, needed to change from the 13 to the 11. And I think what happened is, Honda made the perfect motorbike. And what I mean by that is, people were buying the 1100 and never changing it. If you look at 1100s that come up for sale now, there's a bit of a trend of, they're normally older guys who can't move them around anymore because they're a heavy bike. So these things are going up for sale, they've got really high mileage, but they're well loved, well looked after, and they don't put a foot wrong. And it's exactly the same with the 1300. So apart from this bike, obviously, because it was owned by a policeman that just kind of put it away as an investment, and he got his money back. The 13 is exactly the same. So people buy them, and it's very, very rare, and I mean it's very rare that they sell them. They don't really get rid. So, from a business point of view, that was probably not a good decision for Honda because they made this bike that realistically they were only selling, you know, one time. That then would stay with that person for years and years and years until it eventually, you know, threw its hand in. Now, the 1100 wasn't without its faults. You know, the swing arm on them bikes is just made out of utter dog shit. But parts were readily available. You know, you were able to pick parts up from Honda and from a few other places as well where you could just kind of, you know, keep it running, put a swing arm on it and away you go. They've never really updated the pan since. And it's one of them bikes that unless you've ridden one, unless you've owned one, you don't get it. You don't get it at all. Now my background with bikes has always been you know, dickhead bikes. I've had Street Fighters, Fireblades, R6, um, ZX9, ZZR1400. You know, I've had every possible type of bike cruisers. I've had, I've had them all. And I've never really been truly happy because I've always felt like whatever bike I had, I needed another one to kind of fulfill another role, to, you know, to complete another task, if you like. And the pan, the pan doesn't do that. The pan just does everything. And it's got this stigma attached to it that it's a bit of an old fart bike. Now, I am old-ish. I'm 50. I'm in all right, Nick. You know, I don't think I look after myself. I don't smoke, I don't drink. I mean, I like cakes sausage rolls who fucking doesn't that's what would happen if you ever met me in person you would look at me and you'd go there's a guy that goes to the gym looks after himself and clearly lifts heavy weights big boy but he also clearly likes cakes and sausage rolls you know what i mean let's talk about the prices of these things well they're quite varying i'm gonna go around this van They vary in price quite considerably because there's a couple of different types of owners for 1300 pounds and 1100 pounds. Um, you normally get the one that's been bought by the guy that doesn't really wash it, he just gets on it, goes to work, goes out for a blast at the weekend. You know, he may go camping on it or whatever, you know, do the whole solo ride thing. And it's never seen wax or a jet wash in its life and he's quite happy with that and those are quite cheap you can pick them up for you know two grand and under but then you've got ones like this bike which is x police it's had everything done to it it's in fantastic condition for its year 2006 it doesn't look its age at all and then this takes you then into you know the four grand four and a half grand territory and then obviously newer models again they're going to cost a shit ton more money and I said in my last video, after the ZZR went, you know, I asked people in the comment section, do I get an SC1300 with the money from the ZZR and, and get rid of the 1100? Well, 
funny story with the 1100 which kind of reinforces my point about people not getting rid of them I've had that bike up for sale a couple of times and I keep taking it off I keep removing it um, and there was one one guy that was the deal was almost done and he was if the deal wasn't done he was just like yeah I'm 90% sure I'm gonna go for it and uh, I'll come back to you and before he had the chance to come back to me, I messaged him the next day and said, listen, it's, uh, I've taken it off sale because I'm going to keep it. And it's weird because every time I go and, and see that bike like I did this morning in the garage, you know, to do the B-roll shot at the beginning, I, I love it. And this bike is low on petrol. The 1100 is full. So I'm going to go and, I'm going to go and ride that one. <laughs> because I can because I fucking can the thing about pans in general is like I said this stigma that people don't that stick with them that people just don't understand it, unless you've ridden one you don't get it you do not get it motorbikes now for me is not about the outside the pub or at the bike meet spunkathon talking about fucking brake horsepower and top speed and you know what tyres are stickiest and how you get your knee down and which fucking rear sets your balls and you've got a carbon fibre fucking dick end it doesn't mean anything to me now because what's important is it's just getting on a bike and riding that's all it is and I know you know you sports bike boys you like to go out and you like to have a scratch and you like to do your thing and there's nothing wrong with that I'm not saying you're bad people you know fucking just go and be you that's fine come on There you go. Now granted, if I was on a, a ZR 1400 or something similar, I'd have been at these lights a lot quicker. But that's not the point. So let's talk about a couple of possible problems that you might find with the 1300. So with the 1300, one of the things is the front forks okay so when you get the bike if you go and have a look at one if the front fork seals seem to have gone like you, you rub your hand up and down if you rub your hand up and down the shaft and it's wet <laughs> Giggity. if you do that you need to bear in mind that it may not just be the fork seal because what happens on these bikes is um, the stanchions on the fork they actually start pitting and then they deteriorate inwards um, and then what happens is is that as the you know the, the forks are bouncing up and down again with the double entendre uh, it tears the fork seal so what happens is people then go and buy a bike it needs a fork seal they knock some money off you put it in for the fork seal and then five days later the fucking fork seals leaking again and this is because of the stanchions at the front it's just a weird little thing that happens on these bikes it's very very strange let's just put this uh, take the wind away oh look at that it's almost like I've shut the front door so if you are gonna buy a Honda Pan uh, you know just them couple of things that you're gonna need to look at you know you're gonna need to look at the front forks look at the tyres because they're not really a scratchy scratchy bike so you're gonna have squared off tyres make sure that the electric screen works because apparently the motors they fail as well uh, and that can be pricey to sort out you know just make sure it's got good history you know nine times out of ten people that own them really look after them you know they become a necessity for doing absolutely everything so they're normally found with fantastic service history and they're cherished a little bit you know what I mean this this one obviously because it was a, a 
clod bike, a police officer's bike. You know, it's been regularly washed and looked after, and you know, I said all that before, but you, you, you know what I'm getting at, you know what I mean? Because I can, I'm going to trolley on down the front here, away from you. I mean, I don't know where, if, where does it end now that you ride a Honda Pan? Where does it, where does it end? Do I have to buy one of them, like, luminous jackets with polite written on the back? Do I have to do that now? I couldn't do that though, I couldn't wear one of them polite vests, do you know what I mean? What makes you think, when you buy that, what makes you think you look fucking cool? You look like an absolute fucking knobhead. Absolute knobhead. If you, if you walk past me at any fucking point in your life and you're wearing a polite vest, think bike polite, I am just going to call you a fucking dickhead. Because there's no need for it to try and protect... It's meant to look like police. That's why people wear them. If you want to wear day glow stuff, you want to wear the high vis stuff, that's completely fine. I've done it. I've, you know, I've, I've been abroad on a bike and I've had to do that. And I've got no problem with people wearing high vis. Absolutely zero, none. Don't care if that's your thing, that's your thing. Fucking do it. But don't wear a polite vest. Oh my God. I'm gonna buy a fireman's outfit as well because uh, I lit a match once and I blew it out and then run it under the tap. That means now I'm the chief fire officer of my house. It's the same thing. I was getting a bit angry there, wasn't I? All right, so in review, that's what I think Honda did wrong. Honda made the perfect motorbike that's what they did in my opinion which probably means nothing they created a bike that was that good at doing everything the people bought them and then didn't want to sell them if you look at things like the fire blade well the fire blade was constantly improved and updated over the years and it just got better and better and better all of the time. Got a massive following. I had one, I had a 954 blade and it was it was a fantastic sports bike. Uh, but again it just became a little bit too became a little bit too much for the road for me. Because I wanted to go a bit of distance and what have you. Um, but with the pan they didn't do that. They just they just couldn't. They you know they changed it once. 1100 to the 1300 and there is a lot of people especially on these forums and people that I've spoken to as well that say that the 1100 is better than the 13 I'm not I mean I'm not quite there yet um, I love them both I'd be quite happy to go to Scotland in July or August on either one of them it wouldn't bother me which one I went on it really wouldn't so I wouldn't care all right, look, as always, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. If you want to hit subscribe, hit subscribe. If you want to hit the notification bell, do that. 